Hi friends, good morning. Um, today we are going to do a day in the life vlog. I'm going to take you with me uh, really through what it is I do every day at work as a software developer and technical consultant at IBM. Right now we are still working from home, so it's as exciting as it gets, it's going to be from home, but I hope you still enjoy it just to get a sense and understanding as to what my day to day looks like uh, as a software developer. I sometimes will go into a co-working space. I'm not going to today because I feel like I have a lot of code to do today. And on those days, it's nice to actually use my two monitors versus if I go to a co-working space, I just have my computer. But before we get any further, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. And as always, we have to start the video shouting out some of you wonderful people. So shout out to some of you awesome subscribers. Thank you for your feedback, questions, comments, and most importantly, love. Okay, first things first, coffee. Okay, hi, it's me again. Um, I'm just brewing my coffee, and then in the meantime, we are going to make a protein shake. Sorry about the angle, but you know, we work with what we got here. So right now I'm using, actually just like Paul's old, old protein that he never really finished up, so thank you, Paul. Um, it's, what is it? M-R-E, M-R-E, it's a meal replacement. So I like it in the first thing. So I, even though, I mean, I still eat breakfast, but it's a good kind of first thing in the morning for me. I sometimes will intermit intermittent fast, but for the days I'm not, and I wake up really hungry. This is amazing. Um, it is really clean ingredients. Um, I don't see what else it's called. It's just called MRE. If I find it, I will link it down below, but otherwise just Google MRE. Anyways, we are having that first thing after coffee and water. Water first thing, of course. And then once I've had enough water in my system, some coffee followed by this. So I do three massive um, scoops. There we go. And then I will put some, oh, oh oops, I will put some oat milk one second here. Got my oat milk. This is my favorite oat milk in the world. It is by Greenhouse Juice. And I love it because the ingredients are super clean, which is great because um, some oat milk has like a lot of weird ingredients in it. This is just pure oats. And it's time to blend. I have my shake here. Cheers. It's so good. Okay. Now, time to get to work. Okay, so first thing in the morning, I will usually, when I come into my office, close my office doors, but I actually will stand for a little bit just to kind of get like the energy going. So I'll take my chair, just push it back a little bit. For my first meeting, I will do my rise up desk. Come on. And start with just like this. Okay, hi friends. So I just finished doing some work. Basically, first thing in the morning, I start around 9 a.m. Um, and what I will do is open up my computer check my emails, see if there's anything that needs immediate responding to. I usually go on um, and see if I have any PRs, if they have any comments on it, because I do work with people in different time zones. So if there's any comments on my PRs, I will resolve them as quickly as possible. And then at 9.30 every morning, I have a meeting for Scrum. So during Scrum, it's about a 10 to 15 minute so during Scrum, it's about a 10 to 15 minute call where we talk about uh, what we did yesterday, what we are doing today, and if we have any blockers. I've spoken about this in a few other videos, but it's kind of one of those meetings that no matter what is consistent um, in every single day. We have these meetings except for Friday because it's no meetings Friday, which is huge. If you are a developer or really in the tech industry at all, you will understand the um, what is it? The joy in having no meeting Fridays or no meeting any day where you can just totally focus. But for the most part, Monday to Thursday, the first meeting is 9.30 and it is a scrum. Okay, so now after the scrum, I've been standing for a while, so I'm going to sit down at my desk. So I'll lower my desk 
For those of you asking, I my standing desk mount, it's called, is by Vivo. And it's just, you can go on Amazon and search standing desk mount. I got it because my actual desk I got when I was still in office. So I wasn't planning on having uh, to work remote at all or very little. And then obviously this past year has been full remote. So that changed very quickly. And having something like a standing desk that I can, or standing mount desk, I should say, that I can put on top of my desk has been huge for really being able to stand up, not just sit down for eight hours a day. I was just set my morning um, after my stand-up. I didn't have any other meetings this morning, so my morning was basically full coding, which is rare, but it was amazing. Um, I'm working on a feature right now, so I put all my focus onto that. When I'm working on a new feature, there's a lot that has to go into it from the thought process of the best way to make a feature. You want to ensure that you're making a feature that is reusable for other people. It's not code that can just be written once and done with. You want to make sure you're thinking of others and helping others for future. Um, so I'm still working on the feature, depending on the rating of the feature. So we have meetings where we rate different tickets based on difficulty um, and complexity. And depending on the rating of the feature, it doesn't say it has to take a specific amount of time, but usually based on rating, you know whether the ticket will take you three days or five days or one day based on that which is kind of nice to kind of give you a uh, sense of when you think you'll be done it and um, the difficulty of it so now that i'm continuing to work on the feature um it's almost lunch time but before i go for lunch i always like to help out with pr reviews and reviewing other people's code to see what is coming down the pipeline. And for those of you who don't know what a PR review is, it essentially is when you have made changes to the code base locally, you push them up and you request for others to review your code or review your PR, your pull request. And what this is saying is you are requesting for the code changes you made or code you built out uh, to be merged into a different branch. Usually this would be develop branch or master branch depending on a company's kind of workflow system. So PRs are really to ensure there's kind of a gateway before the code is actually pushed through and doesn't affect actual users. Um, so when you're reviewing PRs, you want to ensure that the code is reusable as much as possible. Um, it's following best practices. Uh, it's following accessibility. It's accessible for users who maybe have trouble um, you know, seeing or hearing or different things like that. There's a lot that goes into it and it's um, one of those things that is really important to do, um, like to get familiar with reviewing people's PRs because it makes you a better developer the more you review other people's code. It's kind of like anything really. If you're looking at how other people are doing things and learning from them, um, it kind of makes you a better developer. But then on the other hand, it makes them a better developer because you're picking apart their code. So it can kind of be terrifying sometimes, but so I'm gonna spend a little bit of time doing PR reviews and then have some errands to run for lunch, which I will take you with me. So I usually take, it's lunchtime now, and I usually take around 30-ish minutes for lunch. Sometimes I take a little bit less, sometimes I take a little bit longer, depending on what's going on or what I need to do. Um, right now I'm going to use my lunch break to go run an errand. Very exciting, very thrilling errand, which is getting the dogs more dog food. Not exciting. Um, and probably stop and get a coffee and figure out what I want to eat for lunch because I have nothing in the house. What do you do for lunch? Do you make lunch typically or do you buy lunch? I'm, I'm guilty for buying lunch usually, so let's go see what we can find. Okay, so I got the dog's food and I went to this cute little cafe next to it called Tori's Bake Shop. They make like really good vegan, sugar-free, dairy-free, all the frees um, kind of spread. So I got this, it's like a herb, it's so bright you can't see, but it's like an herb, 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 however you say it, kind of dip. And then I got some crackers. It's called kale and lemon crackers. We'll see if they are good or not. Um, so this is not my lunch, but this will be like a little snack kind of thing. And what else did I get? I got iced coffee, drink of the gods, or at least of the programmers. Okay, back home to eat a snack and make lunch. Hi friends, I am back from lunch. 
lunch. Um, I feel like I had way too much coffee today, but you know, you do what you do. Um, anyways, I'm about to start working again this afternoon. I will continue on my feature. Um, I do have two meetings, one for meeting with the designer. So sometimes when you are working on a feature, especially front end, of course, uh, you will meet with a designer to go over the designs based on like what they made versus what you made to make sure that it is aligned because sometimes developers are notorious for thinking they made the right design, but they may have, might have added a little bit of flair of their own in there. Um, so making sure that everything is on the same page and the designer is happy with the actual output of the design. Um, and for those of you asking, I get asked a lot what languages I work with. Right now I am working with TypeScript and Angular, but it really base, ba is based on projects. So because I am on the consulting side of things, what that essentially means is um, I'm working on different projects. So one client, it might be front end, the other client, it might be back end. If it's iOS, then I have to be flexible and do iOS. If it's Android, then Android. And there's pros and cons to that. I mean, the pro, of course, is that you become familiar with quickly ramping up on projects and getting familiar with different technology. You're also working with different teams. So sometimes when you're starting on a new project, it almost feels like you are starting a new job because a lot of times you're with a completely new team, a new client, a new code base, and it really keeps you on your toes and ensuring that you are constantly up to date with everything going on. The other hand, it can be really uncomfortable that you're constantly being put in new situations. So you really have to get good with that or comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, but then some people say the other side of it is, you know, you're always working with different technologies. So do you become an expert in one technology then? Or are you always just adapting to new technologies? And I think that's kind of a struggle that on the consulting side as a developer you face is if you want to be an expert in one area, you can be, but it's a bit harder, um, but you are an expert at adapting and being able to build whatever is put in front of you in a very quick timeline. So there's pros and cons to both, I would say, but yeah, two meetings this afternoon, actually both are for design. So I'm gonna start working on my feature and have some meetings. We are going shopping for a dress. I hate shopping, Let's see how this goes. So the, la the end of the last video shopping ended early because um, it was so unsuccessful. Not just because I don't like shopping, but genuinely the stores were very empty. I don't know if it's because I never got stock or refill or whatever you want to call it from COVID, but they were very empty. So failed shopping attempt. I was shopping actually, by the way, the dress I was shopping for is for a wedding coming up. My cousin is getting married in Saskatchewan where I am from. so. Next vlog, you will see uh, a little bit of where I grew up and I'm um, gonna take you on an adventure, vacation um, kind of thing. So let me know in the comments what you wanna see kind of where I grew up or talk to my parents or any of that fun stuff. Um, but right now what I'm doing is I am actually going to get my computer fixed, my personal computer, my MacBook uh, 16 inch. It um, The screen won't turn on. like. I can see it will still accept power and the keyboard is working, but something to do with the screen, it just will not turn on. So I was able to turn it on this morning finally for like a second to at least like sign out of all my accounts. So then when I go deliver it, I feel like a little bit more secure um, giving it to them, knowing that I'm like logged out of everything. And yeah, so I have to quickly, I'm kind of out of breath because I'm still currently working right now. Um, I just need to quickly make a quick stop there and then go right back to work because I have a meeting coming up. Um, but yeah, it's gorgeous outside today and uh, I hope you enjoy this vlog kind of of what a day in the life is like for a software developer and consultant. It's really like varies day to day.
They, I dropped off the computer. They said it should take like two to three business days and they think they can fix it, which is amazing. I'm so happy to hear that because I really, really want to hold out for the new MacBook Pro to come out. As I mentioned, I was Googling it and they say it's supposed to come out in um, the fall, but we will see. And I got my matcha iced latte, which I'm super excited about. And now I need to quickly get back to work to make my meeting. Okay, I think I'm going to end the vlog here. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, kind of enjoyed coming on a day in the life with me and seeing what I was up to. Um, and yeah, let me know in the comments other vlogs you want to see. Uh, and if this gave you kind of a good insight as to what um, my day is like, but every day is so different. So if you enjoy this, give this video a like, subscribe, and um, I'll see you all soon.